Hi everyone. This will be a review of the first couple weeks. First couple weeks of connecting networks. Actually, this would be Monday, Thursday, and no, excuse me, Tuesday, Thursday, and Tuesday. Thursday would be mostly lab. So in the beginning, we talked about the enterprise and we talked about the layers, the distribution, the core distribution and then this whole idea of access into the distribution right so we have like out here all these users and they get go through the access layer the distribution layer allows us to distribute you know the depending on if you're going to a data center other services they talked about services like um, managing your your Wi-Fi, and so forth. Remember distribution layer policy? In the core layer, we just want to move traffic. We don't want to be having those devices making any more decisions than they have to. So then we have this edge Okay, so this is all the enterprise, and this is the enterprise all in here. And then we have this service provider edge, who you have service service provider. You know, however you're connecting out to your other locations. In here, they'll talk about the enterprise edge. Okay. Keep moving. So then here we have a service provider, then outside here we might have a remote office, teleworker, and so forth. We talked a little bit about the internet, tier 1 providers, tier 2 providers, internet service providers. We talked about data centers out in the cloud, and if you noticed over in here we had data centers within the enterprise. And obviously, maybe not so obviously, it could be any combination of however you manage it. Big data centers nowadays, um, Amazon, Google, these aren't the only ones obviously, but Microsoft. They're the big players in the cloud. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> So then over here we talked a little bit about, here's NIAC, I can draw the NIAC cloud, Ooh. here's a NIAC cloud, and we talked about the IT area, the main part of NIAC, and their connection in, and so forth. Alright, slide three of eight, so you kind of know where we're going. Here's some more reviewing, a lot of times we'll draw it like this, you have the core up here, you talk about the distribution layer, and the access layer. Okay, some type of a, like an edge here in which now we have people getting into the network here. This is a crucial edge, this red one right here. And sometimes in a network, sometimes you got an edge out here where you're going out to other providers. Okay, distribution, policy, access list. We did some demos on that. Core, we're just going to move the traffic. And of course, access is how you let it in. And we talked about switches and access points. Two ways of letting people in. The little example over here, service provider allows you to connect in. You might have a core. You might have um, redundancy built into your network and so forth. So a hierarchical network in which you work from layers on up and so forth so you have these everything's in a hierarchy uh, we talked about actually today a little bit if this switch fails it's not going to affect anything else okay depending on where it is in the hierarchy this ability to scale and add or remove equipment from particular devices um, modularity resiliency would be like redundancy and flexibility, um, some people, okay, me included, kind of 
make this very broad. It really has to do with the network adjusting to the traffic. Nowadays we have converged networks in which we have you know traffic, voice, data, video, you know, we have such a wide range of things we can run on a data network and that network has to be flexible to be able to manage, you know, making sure voice traffic gets through appropriately and video is streamed appropriately and so forth. Uh, this was a review of the OSI model, TCP IP model. I don't need to talk about that. The only part about that that we'll be talking about later on is when you troubleshoot as you get better at understanding how this all works, how stuff moves, you know, data moves through there, you can become better at figuring out where to start looking when you're troubleshooting. Five of eight. Okay, this was the work from today. Okay, so this is work here from, let's see, it would be 1, 26, 16, if I'm looking right. All right. Here we talked about uh, this chapter too, by the way, and connecting networks. And we went through a wide range of items in chapter two. We talked about this idea: you have a LAN and you have a LAN at two different locations. You can then pay a service provider to connect those two. Okay. When they're connected, now you have a wide area network. Okay, so we talked about a LAN here being you know, one geographical area, one geographical area, maybe, you know, using technologies in that area. This one, same thing, different technologies to communicate devices in that area. Then when you need these two to talk to each other, we use a service provider, which covers then a wider geographical area. Okay. So we started talking about a small office. A small office might move to a campus office. A campus office then might have branches, commuters, and so forth, and morph into more of a distributed network. We gave some examples for distributed network. I think we talked about Walmart, you know, large network, um, Mickey D's, McDonald's, and so forth. You know, a small office could have a... All right. Okay, so I had a little glitch there. <clears throat> so I'm back, and we were talking about a small office. A small office could have routers connected to a cable modem connected to the Internet. And then within that office, that cable modem would allow you to access point or do routing, and you could also hook things up like a switch. This is similar to the church example we did last term, or that we worked with a real life, a real live example of the church. Okay, a man would be a metropolitan area network. So let's continue on. Let's move over to the other side here and take a look at some of the items we talked about up here. We had some terms. We had customer presence equipment, and we had the DMARC. So, for example, a cable modem could be the DMARC. In fact, I gave that example up here. I showed where this would be the DMARC at my house. Mediacom is responsible for everything up to the cable modem, the cable modem acts as a data communications equipment. And the, on the inside of the house, all of this, the router, we own. And that's our DTE, our data terminal equipment. So we hook the PC up to here, and then the router connects to the cable modem. The cable modem puts the information on that cable and allows us to connect to the internet. So it really looks like this. You have data terminal equipment, data communications equipment. You go through the WAN. On the other end, data communications equipment. Turns it back into data terminal equipment. Years ago, this would be a phone. 
and a phone. Your phone would connect to the central office. They would make the link between. There'd be equipment to convert it back to your phone. So we did an example down here of where we have a small offense LAN and where they connect to the phone company, the central office, that is referred to as a central loop or a local loop to connect to central office. For example, if they wanted frame relay services, the service provider. Toll networks, networks in which you pay most service providers you pay to go through their network. We talked about WAN. It really functions primarily at layers 1 and 2, right? And here's the network layer, transport, session, presentation, application, OSI model. And so these protocols, these protocols are at the data link layer. HTLC, which we used already, maybe you knew it or didn't know it. We're going to learn about PPP, frame relay. You can use Ethernet across the WAN, MPLS, VSTAT, and all the different broadband options we have nowadays. <clears throat> We've talked about circuit switching. public switch telephone network and integrated services digital network ISDN and the typical phone lines and we'll talk a little bit more about those in the next slide alright I um, already did some writing on the slide because the, I was writing and I wasn't recording so I'm going to use red over here and highlight some things Circuit switched, that would be like the own phone system. You, you make a call, you make a connection, and then the connection is broken by hanging up or dropping the line or whatever. Packet switched, packet switch is where we create packets, which we use a lot. We take create a packet, put the packets, send them across, and the packets get put back together on the other end. We talked about WAN can be split up. You can either get a private to set up your wide area network or you can use public. Public would be the internet, it would be broadband and virtual private networks, DSL, cable, wireless for three examples down there. On the public side you can either go dedicated line which would be a lease line, and you have all those different speeds in which we could use for a lease line, or instead of dedicated, you can go switched. You can circuit switch, or you can packet switch. So you make that choice between those two, circuit switch or packet switch. Here we have the telephone network and the ISDN. ISDN was really popular in Europe. And not so much now, so in fact, I'm not sure even if it's offered very much anymore. I couldn't say for sure. Um, public switch telephone network, that's still available, and there would, could be reasons why you'd want to use that. Packet switched, which is extremely popular because of the um, good use of resources. When you send packets through and they find their way through, we have Metro Ethernet, MPLS, frame relay, asynchronous transmission mode, and there's other options. But <clears throat> those are some that we'll, the main ones we'll talk about in this class. And then over here we talk a little more specifically about them. And so let me try to redraw this amongst all my red. So you have a LAN and you want to connect to another LAN, so you want to create a WAN, one way to do it is a lease line. You create a lease line to connect those two. Another way is you could go frame relay. Frame relay, you have these Dell C's and you set it up. And frame relay, in comparison to a lease line, lease line you're going to pay for a certain amount of bandwidth. You're going to pay for a certain amount of bandwidth up here too, but it will be less for the same amount. The reason is, when you connect these, 
is lots of people are going to use you're sharing the resources inside that cloud when we have traffic a lot of our traffic is bursty it'll be high and then it'll be low kind of like how you use the internet you access a site then you're actually doing nothing right a lot of times it can access some more information and then nothing so it's kind of a bursty of nature this allows you to do that and save some money because you're going to pay for this uh, committed information rate and then there'll be a burst rate you can pay for how much you're going to burst above that I draw it up here and uh, here you're paying for the entire line so what they're saying is you've got this bandwidth all the time so if you're not making good use of it it's not a good use of your money where this could be a better use of your money <clears throat> Okay. So frame relay. Uh, other ones you can connect through an MPLS cloud. They actually it's labeling. They actually label the packets and move them through the cloud. Very efficient way of doing that. That's becoming really popular. Um, <clears throat> you could connect down here. I've got phone. You can use public switch network, or you could use ISDN to make your connections. ISDN is a fast dial-up, but both of those are low bandwidth. Asynchronous transmission mode, there we have another option. Typically through fiber, can be very fast. Um, if 53 byte packets since it forces all your data in the those same size packets it can deliver those very efficiently and there's ways of using Ethernet across a wide area of network if you have the cabling for that the capabilities which would almost always have to be fiber <clears throat> alright so just to review those options you can have a lease line you could do frame relay in which you create private virtual circuits through there so it looks just like you're directly connected but it's less cost and uh, a savings in that respect and we'll learn all about that and then we talked about MTL LS labeling capabilities ATM all those would be packet switched Ethernet would be packet switched ISDN and the telephone system, public switch, telephone network, those would be circuit switched. All right, one more slide. Okay, we'll finish up here. Here, you would have the option of connecting, let me use another color now here, connecting this LAN and maybe a LAN over here. You could run both of them through DSL and connect to the internet and then move the traffic to a virtual private network the internet or you could just move the traffic through the internet if you didn't want to worry about um, security DSL um, asynchronous multiplexing uh, D slams so you can have lots of people connected and they can go into the internet and maybe go to a location and then come back and it would put it back to the correct spot okay uh, you could connect with these using cable, and then you could use some wireless techniques of connecting. Immissible Wi-Fi, like in a town, you have a Wi-Fi signal going out, people connecting. You have to have some kind of tower. WiMAX would be more of a direct connection between you and the tower, or you can go satellite. You know, go up to a satellite, and come back down. We talked briefly about 3G and 4G, uh, LTE, new technologies that make that. Remember, those connect to a tower, and then the tower connects you in. And if you're wondering all this other diagram, we short-haul microwave would be maybe a type of WiMAX in which you can put the tower. I drew an example of a silo back home, and they connect it between a tower and a silo, or can have a town and put up two towers connect between them as long as you don't have any interference in between there <clears throat> this is um, 
some stuff from security and so we'll talk about that separate but that was in the notes of the same day we talked about securing router router at the edge physical security securing the iOS configuration and then hardening device local access remote access these ways of getting in enhanced login timeouts and all those things for login authorization administrative roles and we talked about role-based CLI, talk about strong passwords, and then also in that chapter we'll talk about simple network management protocol, time management, and then the last thing, auto secure. That's in the network security. Done.